book named The Secret, A Treasure Hunt was published in America in 1982. It contained 12 paintings and 12 verses. The book explained that these were clues to find 12 hidden treasures across the US. The key to finding the treasures was to match one of the paintings to one of the verses, then solve the riddle to reveal the location and start digging. Since the publication of the book over 30 years ago now, only two of the 12 treasures have been found. The first was located in Chicago and was discovered in 1984. The second was found in Cleveland in 2004. The remaining 10 are still out there waiting to be found. All you have to do is solve the riddles. You can't really make a video about unsolved mysteries without covering some of the greatest mysteries of them all. UFOs. One of the most well-documented or at least observed cases is the phenomenon called Hesdalen Lights in Norway. The seemingly floating lights in the sky have been observed by hundreds of people and sightings have been reported since at least the early 19th century. Theories include ionized dust, ball lightning, combustible particles and, of course, aliens. Shelley Miscavige is, or maybe was, the wife of Scientology leader David Miscavige. For decades, Shelley has been a sort of first lady of Scientology, always by David's side during virtually every meeting, every trip, every photo op. Sometime in 2007, she, for unknown reasons, decided to carry out a few executive decisions without David's okay. In August that year, after attending her father's funeral, she vanished without a trace. The Church of Scientology denies that she's missing and states that she's working for the church out of the public eye, though they refuse to reveal her current location to both the public and her close friends. Former members have said that when they asked about her, their questions were quickly ignored or otherwise avoided. A missing persons report was filed in 2013, but it was quickly closed and classified as unfounded. Shelley Miscavige haven't been seen or heard of for over seven years now. In 1949, geologist Vadim Kolpakov set off on an expedition to Siberia. While wandering through the wilderness, he found something he could not explain. An enormous crater the size of a 25-story building, now known as the Potomsky Crater. Up close, it looked like a volcano, but there haven't been any known volcanoes in the area for at least a few million years, and later research reveals that the crater was formed only around 300 years ago. It's also been speculated to be other things such as a meteorite, a deep gas breakout, the obligatory alien or crashed UFO theory, and the list goes on. What or who could have given rise to the crater has yet to be discovered. The Voynich Manuscript. It's believed to be from the early 15th century and was purchased in 1912 by a man named Wilfred Michael Voynich. It's a codex consisting of around 240 pages, handwritten in a language which after countless attempts, no one has been able to decipher. This has led many to speculate about its origin, author and the meaning of its content. The text uses an alphabet of between 20 to 30 letters, but what's strange is that there are practically no words with fewer than 2 letters or more than 10. The whole text seemed to be quite repetitive as well, with some words appearing up to 3 times in a row, and some letters being found in the majority of the words throughout. This, along with other aspects that makes it quite different from other European languages, has led many to believe it might actually just be nonsense. Then again, why would someone go through the trouble of writing a whole 240 pages, including these quite elaborate graphics, if it doesn't actually mean anything? 
In 1900, the only living souls on this small Scottish island were three lighthouse keepers named Thomas Marshall, James Duckett and William MacArthur. The day after Christmas, a supply ship arrived at the island, but to the crew's surprise, there were no one at the dock waiting for them. They tried blowing the ship's horn and sent up a flare, but there was still no activity on the island. They eventually went to investigate. As they climbed the stairs leading up to the lighthouse, they noticed that two of the three waterproof jackets, usually kept in the hall, were missing. Reaching the kitchen, they found the remains of a meal and a chair laying on the floor as if someone had left in a hurry. But, most importantly, the lighthouse keepers were nowhere to be found. A further investigation also revealed the strange final entries in the lighthouse log. On the 12th of December, Thomas Marshall wrote of extreme winds, worse than anything he had experienced before. He also noted that James Duckett, the principal keeper, had been very quiet, and that the third assistant, William MacArthur, had been crying. What's strange about the final remark was that William MacArthur was a seasoned mariner and was known on the Scottish mainland as a real tough guy. Why would he be crying about a storm? Log entries on the 13th of December stated that the storm was still raging and that they had all been praying. But why would these experienced lighthouse keepers inside a brand new lighthouse be praying for a storm to stop? They should have been perfectly safe and they should by all means have known that. But even more peculiar is that there were no reported storms in the area during this time period. In fact, the weather was calm. The final log entry was made on the 15th. It simply reads, Storm ended. See calm. God is over all. The most accepted theory is that all three men were somehow swallowed by the sea, never to be seen again. In 1970, a group of hikers outside of Bari in Norway suddenly came upon the charred, naked corpse of a woman in the middle of East Dalen Valley. The body was surrounded by sleeping pills, bottles of liquor, an almost incinerated passport and for some reason her fingerprints had been sanded off. She was later linked to a pair of suitcases found at the train station, but all the labels in her clothes had been removed. They also found 500 German marks and a diary with coded entries. It was eventually discovered that the woman had traveled throughout Europe using different fake names, and several witnesses reported that she had used different wigs, changed hotel frequently and spoke multiple languages. The woman's identity remains unknown, but it's generally presumed that the Isdal woman must have been some sort of spy. UVB-76, also known as The Buzzer, is a shortwave radio station that broadcasts a short, monotonous bus tone, repeating at a rate of approximately 25 tones per minute, 24 hours a day. It's been active since at least 1982, when the first reports were made of a station on this frequency, and on rare occasions the buzzer signal is interrupted by a coded voice transmission in Russian. Its origin has also been traced to Russia, but its actual purpose remains a mystery. The most reasonable theory is that the station is used for some kind of military purpose, and occasionally distant conversations and other background noises have been heard behind a buzzer. And keep in mind, it takes a lot of power to constantly transmit a signal, especially when it's been running for over 30 years. So there must be a very good reason why the sound is so important that it warrants this kind of investment. 
In the 1880s, the body of a young woman was found floating in a river in Paris. Police quickly pulled the body out of the water and sent it to the coroner. When the coroner received it, he for some reason decided to make a plaster mold out of her face. Random customers at the mold shop took notice of the piece and soon copies of the anonymous dead girl's face were being mass produced. The copies became a fashionable morbid fixture and the mass quickly spread across Europe. Fast forward a couple of decades and a Norwegian toy maker decides to create the world's first CPR test dummy. Guess what face he uses as a mold for the dummy? Yeah, because you know. Why the fuck not? Every single one of those CPR dummies manufactured since has had her face. Which means that if you've ever had to take CPR training, you have wrapped your lips around the mouth of a 130 year old dead girl. Who by the way was no more than 16 years old when she died. To this day, nobody has any idea who she was. Since 2012, there have been a complex online puzzle game starting every January, which is hosted by someone who calls themselves 3301. The complex puzzles draws on elements of cryptography, mathematics, literature, hidden messages, data security, and philosophy. Physical clues appear in places as diverse as the US, Poland, Spain, Australia, and Korea. 3301 claims that its puzzles attempt to find intelligent individuals, but they don't say why. Many believe these nearly impossible puzzles are a secret recruitment tool for organizations like CIA or NSA, but no company or individual has so far taken credit or tried to monetize it. What makes it even more mysterious though is that no one who solved the puzzles completely have ever come forward. On the 6th of January this year, the third annual game began with this message released as an image using a seemingly random and anonymous Twitter account. And by the way, this year's game is still ongoing. <laughs>